Despite being down 0-2 in the West Finals, believe me when I say this, the Los Angeles Lakers are still winning the 2023 NBA title. Whether it's winning 4 straight or 4 out of 5, this Lakers team has displayed resiliency all season long, and as good as the Denver Nuggets are, I just don't see them beating the Lakers two more times. Back at the Crip, while the powerhouse Nuggets have a commanding lead in this series as it stands, considering the Nuggets faltered a massive second half run in game one down the stretch, and have only won both games by a combined 11 points, despite LBJ having not hit a single three-pointer in the entire series, and Game 2 being the day of the week where Anthony Davis is scheduled for an off night, with the Lakers having home court advantage for three of the next four games, and with just a few minor adjustments from Coach Darvin Ham, even with Denver acting tough when they up, believe me when I say this, 2023's version of the purple and gold are about to become just the 34th team in NBA history to overcome an 0-2 deficit. And yes, teams facing this deficit historically have a 7.4% chance at winning a playoff series, but something about the personality of this series, and also based off the mid-game adjustments that Darvin Ham made in Game 1, plus the history of game-to-game -game adjustments that his fresh basketball rookie head coach in mind has proven to make in this LA 2023 playoff run, I think the quote-unquote impossible is about to happen. Right quick, subscribe and turn on notifications for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at dflowhoops on Instagram and Twitter. Disagree with me all you want, I have a massive inclination that with their backs definitively against the wall, with every talking head about to be rightfully praising Denver, given how Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic have been incredibly dominant so far, that coach Darvin Ham has that special quote-unquote clutch gene that Skip Bayless refers to so often, but in the coaching aspect, and that his game-to-game -game adjustments entering Game 3 are going to be so shockingly deceptive for Denver that it's going to tear the roof off Crypto.com Arena. In terms of the struggles for LeBron, they call letting fly of jumpers shooting, but they should call it finessing, as hitting deep-range bombs, any shots for that matter, but specifically jumpers, just takes a certain level of mental stability, which you know if you've ever played basketball. Shooting the basketball requires a certain rhythm, a certain passion, a certain type of mechanism which works differently for every player. That to me is one of the more fascinating aspects of this sport. By watching a player compete and lay everything out there in the sport of basketball, we learn everything about them, their entire aura, identity, flair for the dramatic, understanding of the culture, not to mention athletic prowess and stamina both mentally and physically. Those things are all put on full display for the world to tear into with their two cents. No one, in not just the sport of basketball, but across all sports, understands how in every sense the mental aspect can inflict terror on opponents, fans, media members, coaches, and teammates more than LeBron James. LeBron is truly the most intelligent player and one of the most intelligent human beings that I've come across in this life. Call me a glazer all you want, but you can't deny that LeBron's gonna figure this out. LeBron has been the black Troy Bolton of the association for quite some time now, and I know what you're gonna say. Deep low, this LBJ is just aging. The young Nuggets, led by two incredible superstars in Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray, are just younger, and the changing of the guard is happening. And yes, even as logical as that sounds, let's not forget this was a gentleman sweep for the Lakers back in the bubble. And yes, after game one of this series, your boy d Flow admittedly said this could be a gentleman sweep for Denver. But let me explain. First of all, I'm big enough to admit that my previous take from game one may be right, and what you're hearing right now may be a load of BS. I'm not some troll who's going to complain about the refs if things go wrong or blame a specific player on the Lakers but somehow, maybe it was a sixth sense for the altitude in the mile high, it slipped my mind. The Lakers have not only not taken a single L on their home floor for the entirety of the 2023 playoffs, which takes into account the play-in, their first round win against Memphis, and their second round win against the reigning champion Warriors, but they haven't lost at Crypto since all the way back on March 26th. Damn y'all, if that doesn't tell you that the Lakers are about to take this series by the balls, then you're a Nuggets stand. Three of the next four games, 
and yes, there will be at least three or four games left in this series, will take place in sunny Los Angeles, with Kim Kardashian sitting courtside, combined with the additional 25 baddies with clout, and one celebrity after the next sitting courtside, including LeJack Nicholson. Trust me, the pressure for Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic is about to be unheard of, and these foreigners are going to quite simply crack. You're either built for the bright lights of Hollywood, or you're not, and the script is about to flip on its head. I think you could very well see the Lakers bouncing back in Game 3 with a blowout win, pulling off a close Game 4 win after the Nuggets make adjustments, go back out on the road to make a dramatic come-from-behind run in the second half of Game 5 back in Denver, and then finish it off back at the Crip in another dramatic Game 6 W. Crazier things have happened, but equally crazy things have also happened in the very recent past. For example, the Lakers' LA counterpart in the Clippers lost the first two games of their second round series to the Jazz in 2021 and came back to win the next four. The Bucks did the same thing that year in 2021 against the Phoenix Suns in the NBA Finals. And while only 33 teams have overcome a 2-0 series deficit of all time, however, since 2016, the chances for said teams being down 2-0 have skyrocketed. 11 of the 34 teams in history that have overcome a 2-0 series deficit have occurred over the last 7 years alone. That means 33% of the total 2-0 advantages that have been made throughout the entire 76-year history of the NBA have come in just over half a decade. What's changed since 2016? First of all, the media narratives have become more sensationalized than ever, with talking heads making hot takes being the current name of the game, strengthening motivation for the losing side. Second of all, LeBron James. Because since 2016, when the string of 11 2-0 series comebacks began, two of those teams have included LeBron. LBJ overcame a 2-0 series deficit in 2016's NBA Finals to beat the Golden State Warriors in 7, and LBJ overcame a 2-0 series deficit in 2018's Eastern Conference Finals to beat the Boston Celtics in 7. Don't forget, in addition to those comebacks, LeBron also overcame a 2-0 series deficit in one of, if not the most legendary playoff series known to man, against one of the greatest defensive teams of all time, back in 2007 against a Ben Wallace, Tayshawn Prince, and Chauncey Billups all-time defense. LeBron would miraculously beat the Pistons four straight times. LeBron's about to fuel the Lakers to his fourth career series comeback in this scenario. You just watch. On a bad foot, then leading the Lakers to their first championship in their home arena since 2010, at that point, we'll all then remember this LeBron run as one of the greatest of all time, and the King will officially have his nickname changed to the GOAT. While this is supposed to be the year where we celebrate Michael Jordan, given his number was 23 and this year is the year 2023, we're all about to learn what Mr. James is made of. I'm going down with the ship in my writing of the script that this will be an all-time comeback and further prove the greatness of LeBron.